For at TV, the world is thinking. Australia's already committed almost $2 billion, both at the federal and state level, to carbon capture and storage. It's a technologically unproven system. Bits of it have been proven, but as a system, it's a long way off. Uh, with so much money being poured in, there's no doubt that we will see some, some pilot plants up and running in the next 10 years around the world, and there's already a number under development. But even the United States, under the uh, previous Bush government, uh, discontinued their prime uh, project under the US Department of Energy, the FutureGen project, which was a 1.6, I think it was about 1.6 billion US dollar project to build a coal-fired power station with uh, capture and, and sequestration of the carbon dioxide. And they discontinued it on the basis of rapidly escalating costs. So this is a very complex system, uh, technologically speaking. Uh, several pathways have been suggested. Uh, capturing the carbon dioxide from the chimneys, the coal-fired power stations, which looks like being very difficult indeed, uh, or creating a new kind of coal-fired power station that converts the coal into gas and separating the carbon dioxide from the gas, which in theory is easier. But all these things are going to take a lot of time. I personally hope that we will see carbon capture and sequestration available sometime in the 2020s, maybe 2025 on a commercial scale, uh, we desperately need it, along with renewable energy uh, sources. But the reality is it's not going to happen soon. And I am concerned that countries, as you're saying, Ian, are putting in these huge resources. And in a, a situation where there are limited economic resources, that means renewable energy sources and energy efficiency, which work and which are available now in many cases, uh, are not being funded. 